All right, so uh, Kareem grabs the board and makes a good outlet pass, and now the Lakers are going to be out in transition. So we click the possession button as it's a transition possession. We go over here. Uh, the Celtics don't stop it because 10 is higher than their transition stop rating. And so we look and see that Magic is the outlet, and he's going to be running the, the Showtime transition for the Lakers. So let's go to that page, and let's see what Magic's able to do. So we click the button here. Let's see where it's going to fit into Magic's range. 78 is in his uh, transition jumper range, but he draws a foul instead. And because, uh, as the instructions point out, uh, this doesn't fall into the criteria for a continuation. So instead, it's a foul that takes place on the ground, and it's not even during a shot because if, if, if this number were 15 or less, it would have been during a shot. 16 or higher indicates that it happens actually on the ground. And the, the foul is going to be called on Kevin McHale. So McHale picks up a personal, and that's team foul number four for the Celtics. Because the foul, the non-shooting foul, took place during transition, we're not going to count a possession. Instead, we're going to inbound the ball with a play result. So we inbound the ball, and, it's, and it calls for an open jump shot for the offensive option color that is black. So that's James Worthy. And to determine whether an, an open jump shot is made, you add his J-shot rating to Bird's J-shot rating, and that's going to give you 63. So let's click the number, and he misses it barely. In and out, right? He, miss, he missed it by one. So Worthy misses the shot, and we're going to have a rebound battle after that. So let's go back over here, give Worthy a missed field goal attempt, and we're going to have a rebound battle that's close between high and the power forward. So let's click back over. And for the Lakers, high is Rambus, obviously, and McHale. So it's going to be a range of 1 through 65 for McHale. We click the button, and it's 12, which is almost a fast break, but still within his uh, transition rating. So Mikhail gets the board, and he's going to kick it out, and Boston's going to be out in transition. So uh, defensive rebound for Mikhail, and they're out in transition. We click possession. We assign a minute, and then we go to the team area, and we're going to see here uh, that four is a stop for the Lakers. Not a fourth shot, it just means that they slow down transition and the ball goes to the red option. Who happens to be Dennis Johnson and let's say DJ tries to get by Magic on, an, uh, on a drive to the hole. So we click the button and we let's see what happens here. 77 is within Dennis Johnson's drive rating but and 6 is higher than Magic's stop rating and his commit foul rating so no foul takes place there. DJ gets to the hole and he's going to take an inside shot and he makes it. So Dennis Johnson gets by Magic and we see that there's nothing here listed on the assist, and so we just give a bucket to, to DJ, and it's 18-14 Celtics, halfway through the first. Uh, we're going to continue as the Lakers inbound the ball with a pace check and click possession, and let's go ahead and see what happens uh, on the numbers here. 54 is higher than the Lakers' transition rating, 6 is higher than a set off and stop, or a commit foul, and the ball is going to the white option, which happens to be Rambus. Sorry, I hit the wrong button. Go to the Lakers page here and Rambus. Let's have him work inside on McHale and see what happens. So we click the buttons and we see that 98 is up high and it's in uh, ox play, the defensive ox play range for McHale. And then you use the number 15 and it's above his passing lane force number and then the OB. And because it's odd, that means the ball is played out of bounds. So McHale tips it away from Rambus. We go back to the main page and we're not going to use a possession this time. We're just going to use an inbounds play. And it says full check. And as we go back, full check was a, obviously it, it's, it's within um, Boston's stop rating. They had a stop rating of one for a set offense. And so that means that Byron Scott, the red option, is going to take a forced inside shot, which he makes. All right. So seven is, is down within his inside shot rating of 23. So you know, he had a little over 23% chance of making it. And, and that's how the numbers go. And seven's inside of that. And Magic's the one that set that up. So we go to the main page. And Scott gets a bucket. Assist to Magic. So here come the Celtics up the floor on a pace check. And 17 is within their transition rating, right? Of 20. And seven is above the Lakers stop on that. And they don't commit a foul either. And again, Danny Ainge is the outlet on the play. So let's go to the Celtics page. And let's see what Ainge does in transition. We cycle the numbers. We see that 56 is inside of, of Danny Ainge's transition jump shot, and power forward is going to be the one that he's pulling up on. So Ainge pulls up on Rambus, and let's see what happens. Uh, Rambus has uh, a stop drive rating of, of, of 2, and 7 is above that, and 77 is in the team defensive cards, uh, the team defensive card rating for 
the, the Lakers and let's see what that leads to because transition jump shots have a higher make range and it's 76 so in and out for Ainge he barely misses it and this this number of difference here shows you that in transition uh, the jump shots are a little bit more open and available so go back to the main page Danny Ainge misses it and the rebound battle is close between the center and the power forward but it's red so that means it's uncontested so let's get another cycled number and see what Rambus does with that and it, it was 14. I accidentally hit it twice. So when we go back, and that's in Rambus's outlet range. So Rambus gets a defensive rebound, and he's going to get the outlet pass quickly ahead for a transition uh, offensive op opportunity for the Lakers. So now the Lakers are going to get out in transition. So we click possession, and let's have a look at the numbers. Again, we're just checking to see if, if Boston's able to slow that down at all. They're not, and so the outlet is magic out in transition for the Showtime Lakers. So let's have a look at the, uh, the Lakers layout here. Let's cycle the numbers and see what Magic comes up with. 61 is within Magic's uh, transition jump shot range and it's against the power forward Kevin McHale. So Magic's going to pull up on McHale and we see here that 5 is higher than McHale's stop drive rating, right, because he's a bigger uh, player. And 87 is way above, as we look back at the team card, it's, it's higher than Boston's, uh, what they give up on a transition jump shot. But this is important, and I'm glad it came up here. 87, because it's blue, it triggers a specific result. All right? And that result is any time a transition jump shot or a regular jump shot or a three ball or a free throw, anything that's not an inside shot is taken, and the blue numbers come up, it leads to a specific result. In this case, it's 87, which is odd, which means that the ball is knocked out of bounds to the offensive team. So we go to the main page here, and uh, Magic took a jumper. It was missed, and the ball was knocked out of bounds, which means uh, they get an offensive rebound on that play. All right? And so because it went out of bounds, and after a missed shot, the Lakers are going to get another possession, which means it's an actual time possession. So uh, we're going to go ahead and click possession and then assign a minute play to everybody. And then we're going to actually run a, a full ch an inbounds play, which calls for a full check. And when we go to the Celtics uh, card here, we see that uh, 84 isn't high enough to be in the Deox range. But for a set offense, three leads to a stop for the blue offensive option. And it's an inside shot that's going to take place. Well, that happens to be Magic Johnson. And so he's going to take a forced inside shot. Let's cycle the numbers and see what happens. And 20 fits within Magic's inside shot rating of 27. And the assist goes to the high player, which is uh, Kareem. So Boston, again, on the inbounds play, they, get, they played good defense. And they forced Magic into a tough shot that he happened to make. He only had about a 27% chance for it, and he makes it. And Kareem was the one that set him up on that. So Magic gets the shot, and Kareem the assist. And here come the Celtics now. They're cooling off some, right? So we're going to see uh, what happens here on the pace check. And we're going to go to the team cards. And now that we start to remember some of these things, 52 is above their transition rating and 10 is above the set offensive stop number for the Lakers. And the ball goes to the blue option. That's Kevin McKelly. He's going to work in the low post against Rambus. So let's see what happens. We cycle the numbers. 69 is within his post move, but 3 is within Rambus's stop uh, rating for post. And he, go, and he plays very good defense. And he's going to force Kevin McHale into a tough shot. So let's see what happens. Let's cycle the numbers. And 70 is certainly way higher than anything in his inside shot range. And it calls for a possibility of an interior block by the power forward. But 18 is way higher than Rambus's number. So let's go back to the main page. And Kevin McHale uh, on a post move misses an inside shot. It's a close rebound battle between the small forwards. And because it's orange, it's going to be physical. All right. So Bird is fighting worthy for the, for the offensive board in close. And... That that drops Worthy down to a 65, and let's see what happens. It's 14. So Worthy wins the defensive rebound battle against Bird. So let's go back to the main page, and because it call it was it was a physical one, he wins a physical point for his team, which is increasing their momentum, and he gets a defensive rebound. And 14 was within his transition rating on an outlet, so he out, he gets it's, a, it's a, a really good result. Gets the defensive board. It's a physical point for the team, and he's going to get them out in a transition opportunity. All right, so now the Lakers are out in a transition, and let's, let's see what happens. We click possession, have a look at the numbers. I can tell just by remembering that six, uh, the 10 is higher than the Celtics' uh, tran uh, transition stop rating. So 
Uh, the Lakers are out, successfully running the floor a little bit, and the outlet is to Byron Scott this time. So let's see what Scott does. Um, we're going to click the numbers here and see what happens. 14 is in Byron Scott's transition setup range, all right? And blue is the offensive option color. So Byron Scott's going to try and set up magic in transition. We go to the main page, and we're going to click the transition setup button here. And we look down here and see that the, the, the result of a pass is going to be a lay-in. And it would be a no-look pass, but Byron Scott has to have a, a, an offensive assist rating that, that, that gets up to number four. So let's have a look here. If this assist number is higher than Scott's, yep, offensive assist rating of three. So that just means he, he gets it to Magic, who's going to try a land, but it's not a descriptive pass. It's not a no-look. If, if, if Scott would have had the, the, the required number for that, he would have made a no-look pass. So all that does is just, it just provides you a little bit of fun and excitement. There's some cool things happen there behind the back, fancy, you know, different things like that. And uh, since he wasn't able to uh, do that, it's just a pass to Magic to try a land. And the fast break defender is the point guard. So we're going to use DJ's drop, stop drive rating of three to see if he can do anything on that. So Scott gets it over to Johnson. And let's see what the result is. It's uh, four, which is higher. The number 10 is higher than DJ's stop drive rating. And let's have a look at at the uh, inside. No, and since he wasn't able to stop it, it's, a, it's just an automatic land. All right. So we go back to the main page and magic from Byron Scott. So the Lakers are now ahead 20 to 18. So uh, let's go ahead and continue play here. It's a pace check for the Celtics. And when we look, 16 is within their transition rating. So that means they're trying to get out in transition, but two is within the stop rating for transition for the Lakers. That doesn't lead to a four shot. It just means that they slow transition down. And Dennis Johnson, right, the uh, red option is the, is the player with the ball. So let's say DJ tries to work for a jump shot, click the buttons, uh, 39 is in his shoot range, and 8 is higher than Magic's uh, on-ball defense for, for a pass or a shot. So DJ gets off a shot, and 87 means it's, it's way higher than the, than the, the Lakers' um, um, make range for a jump shot. We remember that. But the commit foul button pops up, but it's not. It's one over. Magic Johnson's commit foul range, right? If it would have been 2.0 or higher, he would have committed the foul, and he would have been upset since the ref indicator is there. But instead, DJ misses the shot, but because it's a jump shot and it's blue and it's odd, that means that the ball is knocked out of bounds, and, and the Celtics, after the missed shot and, and during the rebound, they get an offensive rebound there because the ball is knocked out of bounds, and they're going to continue play with an inbounds pass. So the Celtics are going to inbound the ball now after Dennis Johnson's missed uh, transition jumper. And the ball was knocked out of bounds. So we're going to, uh, since it was an offensive rebound, they're going to have an, a new possession. And we clicked possession. Minute came up, came up, and I assigned a minute play to everybody on the floor. And the inbounds calls for a full check. So let's look at the team cards here. Um, for the Lakers, 89 is almost to their Deox number, but not quite, but four is within their set offensive number. And it's orange here, but that doesn't matter on the team. It only matters when, when individual players match up. So uh, they, they, they play good defense, and the offensive option color of black is going to get a forced outside shot. Well, uh, that is Bill Walton, if I remember right. Yep, so Bill Walton's going to take a forced jumper. He's, he's got a make range up to 20 on that, so let's see what the result is. 35 is higher than that, so that's obviously a miss. So we go back to the main page, and we give Walton a missed jumper. And a defensive rebound is going to take place next. And that's between the power forward and the shooting guard. So it's, it's in close between McHale and Byron Scott. So we go back to the Celtics here. And let's... Uh, See what the result of that offensive rebound is. So there's a rebound battle that's inside, interior, and close between um, Kevin McHale and Byron Scott. And we see that McHale uh, modifies Scott's defensive rebound number down to 60. So we're going to click the results and see what happens. And Byron Scott gets the uh, defensive rebound, and it's low enough that it's within his fast break range. So let's go back. And we're going to give Byron Scott a rebound, a defensive rebound on that. And we're going to get the Lakers out in a fast break. It's, it, fast breaks don't count as a possession, so we just click play result. And 10 is obviously higher than, than the Celtics' ability to, to slow down or stop the break. 
and uh, Scott can set up to Magic for a two-on-one fast break. So Magic is the outlet, and it's going to be a two-on-one fast break. And who is the offensive option? It's red. So the play runs through Magic, and he gets it up to the red offensive option, and that is going to be Byron Scott. So it's kind of a little give and go going down the floor for a, a, a two-on-one fast break. So let's see what happens when we click and cycle the numbers for Scott. Let's see what takes place during the, uh, the, the two-on-one fast break. So we click the numbers and we see that 70 is higher here than his uh, dunk and lay-in numbers for a fast break, which means he's going to attempt a fast break setup. So we go back to the main page. We click fast break setup. It opens up a scenario here. His assist rating is only three, so seven's above that. So he doesn't make the behind the back pass, but he does get it to the green offensive option for a lay-in unless the small forward can do something about it. So when we click back over here, that means the ball is going to Kareem, and he's going to try a lay-in, and and unless uh, Larry Bird can do something to kind of to 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 interrupt that or or to force a missed shot. So we click the numbers here using Bird's. Yep, he misses it just by one, and instead he barely he, the number is a little bit higher than a stop drive rating, and so the lay-in counts. So uh, Byron Scott hits Kareem Abdul-Jabbar on a fast break lay in and the Lakers are going on a little bit of a run here so the Celtics started off hotter than hot they've cooled down lately in fact they're down to 53.3 percent shooting the Lakers are still on a roll and then they're leading 22 18 with four minutes left and we're going to leave it here I'll pick this up later but we're going to leave this first uh, video here and I, I hope it's given you a pretty good feel and enough randomness to what's gone on that you've got a little bit of an indication of how things go and that it sets you up well to start playing some games on your own get your teams laid out and, and start having some fun with that courtside basketball. Well, thank you for joining us at FTP Sports Games.